Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Natalie Morimoto, and I serve as the admissions coordinator for the LCMS Floyd College of Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this opening cycle webinar, where we will address the adjustments we have made to our process in an effort to better support you guys, our applicants, given the disruption COVID-19 has brought on to many of our lives. It is with pleasure that I introduce to you our speaker tonight, Dr. Layla Harrison, Senior Associate Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs here at the LCMS Floyd College of Medicine. Oh, thank you so much, Natalie. Uh, welcome, everybody. So glad that you have joined us this evening. Um, we have received a lot of questions related to our process in light of COVID-19. So we thought that it would be a good idea to go ahead and, and conduct this webinar to answer your questions. Uh, we, do, we are recording the webinar, so we do plan to have it uploaded to our uh, websites as soon as we can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. And um, basically going to cover, um, you know, the admissions processes that have been adjusted this for this cycle that just began, um, and then certainly answer questions that you have. Um, I hopefully you saw the slide before with my awesome team. Uh, they are all, or most of them are on the call uh, tonight. And so uh, certainly you don't have to wait till the end if you have questions. Feel free to go ahead and start putting them into the chat box, and uh, they will either answer them as we move as i move along uh, they're all well trained to do that uh, and then natalie will post some questions to me at the end so initially i'm going to go over the covid 19 adjustments we've made to our process and then at the end um, i want to also just cover some um, topics that typically we get a lot of questions about so uh, so hopefully you'll stay around for that so let me just go ahead and get started uh, essentially what i'm going to first cover are um, the prerequisites, that's obviously a common question that's coming out right now in this cycle. Um, also information related to the MCAT. Uh, I'm going to share a secondary application question that we have included in this uh, cycle uh, secondary so that you can already prepare for how to answer that. Um, and then I'm gonna share our adjustments we've made in the timing of our interview cycle and our process for that. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, um, provide just some general information about our admissions process and answer those questions as well. So let's first talk about the prerequisites. I know that for many institutions this spring and potentially even into the summer, and for all we know, the fall, um, that a lot of institutions, because of COVID-19 and having to move to an online coursework um, in the middle of the semester or quarter or term this spring, that many courses um, went to a pass fail from a grade, grade cor graded course to a pass fail course. I know that some of those courses, it was an option for you to, for, or for some applicants, it was, an, it was an option to either take the grade or take the pass fail. Uh, for others, it wasn't an option. It just, it just simply transitioned to pass fail. So what we normally require in any normal site goal these are our three prerequisite courses, biology with lab, physics with lab, organic chemistry with lab. Um, we typically require that those be taken with a grade and that that grade be a, a C, any level of C or better. However, in light of all that has occurred in undergraduate coursework, um, you know, this, this due to COVID, we have um, decided we will accept the pass-fail we will accept these courses pass fail uh, in the spring and summer uh, semesters quarters terms. If we find that this is also occurring in the fall because of COVID, uh, then we will certainly make that adjustment as well. So we just want to let you know that we understand that and we had no issue uh, in going ahead and transitioning to accepting the pass fail. Um, and also want to let you know, we do get a, a common question is, do we accept online coursework? We've always accepted online coursework. Our, our only requirement is that all coursework be taken at an accredited institution. Um, and so as long as the coursework, if it's online, is taken at an accredited institution, we accept it. Um, there are a lot of courses uh, these days that are being offered online, and so we don't see that as any sort of less quality coursework than others. First of the prerequisites, and this is where I was talking about the prereqs, uh, we'll accept pass-fail uh, for spring, summer, um, and potentially fall if it's still impacted, and then I mentioned the online. So go ahead and go to the next one. 
So in terms of the MCAT, what we normally require is that um, the MCAT being older, no older than four years from at the time of matriculation. So in this cycle that just started, that would be 2017. Um, but we have, uh, you know, we want to be thoughtful about this too. We know that many of you might be, you know, may have just be taking the MCAT or have taken it recently or plan have it planned. Uh, but there might be some of you, we do see a lot of non-traditional applicants in our process. Uh, so there may be people that have taken it uh, a lot sooner, or a lot, it might be older than that. So we are accepting, extending this to accepting a 2016 calendar year MCAT as well. So that's five years for matriculation. Um, we also normally require that the MCAT um, um, is, is the oldest or the latest MCAT that we will accept in a regular application cycle be in September or the September date. And right now the MCAT is only scheduling to the end of September. But, and I don't know that the WMC is going to do this. So please, please understand that I, I do not know if that's the case. However, if for whatever reason, if COVID continues on and the WMC has to add additional dates after September, so let's say they add some October dates, we will accept those. So whatever adjustments that uh, the WMC has to make in this calendar year, we will kind of adjust accordingly. Um, and um, just know that we will still require the MCAT uh, because our process is quite unique in the way that we assess the MCATs. If you've hopefully visited our website, um, you'll see that we look at the MCAT for consideration for our secondary application where we weigh the overall undergraduate GPA primarily and then the MCAT in these kind of three tiered um, combination thresholds because that is the only time we ever assess MCAT and GPA and I'll explain that a little bit more coming up so we will still continue to require the MCAT in order to be considered for a secondary. So as I mentioned we have added a um, an, an essay question um, or a question on our secondary application because we we understand there there might not be uh, an easy way in the MCAS application or the way that we had our other secondary questions outlined to allow you a space to really kind of, to really tell us how you might have been impacted by COVID-19. So this is a new question that is going to be in our secondary application for this cycle. Uh, it says, please share any disruptions in your academic, volunteer, work, personal life related to COVID-19 that you would like the admissions committee to consider. So you know, and it, it's and it's an optional question, and it's completely up to you how much you want to divulge. Uh, you know, it is possible that some people ha could have had very personal impacts of this. They might have had family members um, sick and, and other circumstances. And if you feel like you wanted to share that, we wanted to provide a space for that. Others of you might have had disruptions, certainly in your academic pursuits, but also maybe in your volunteer and work life. Um, and we want just to provide a space for you to be able to share that with us. And it's also going to make it easier for our admissions committee to be able to look specifically at that so that if we see, um, you know, maybe you didn't have a lot going on in the spring or in the summertime, and maybe we can get a better understanding of, of why that is with this question. So our interview cycle, um, so a couple of things we've done here. Normally we start our interview cycle about mid-August or so. That's when we start interviewing. We went ahead and pushed our start to mid-September. Um, and this is for a couple of reasons. Um, a big reason is that AMCAS is delaying the transmission of applications to us by two weeks. So normally we receive AMCA, uh, applications from AMCAS uh, starting at the end of June, but that is being pushed to July 10th will be the date that we receive our first set of applications from MCAS, and then it comes in on a rolling basis thereafter. Um, and so we need time to allow those applications to go through the screening process to receive a secondary, then we need those applicants time to submit that secondary. And then the, 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 after that, they will go into a screening process to be considered for an interview. So we need all of that time in there to be able to, um, to, be able to provide uh, us enough of a, of a space to allow you time. We really like to, if possible, give our applicants about a month, three weeks to a month notice about an interview. And so that will give us more of a cushion. So, so that's, a, that's an adjustment. We do still anticipate being done in February, 
we do anticipate still interviewing the same or approximately the same number of candidates. We interviewed 350 applicants this, this most recent cycle that's just about to finish. Um, and one of the questions we're getting a lot from applicants right now is a concern that what if I can't take the MCAT for the first time or I need to retake it and my test date isn't until the end of September due to all the disruptions that are going on? Um, will I be at a disadvantage? And I want you to know that, first of all, we very strongly believe in a fair and equitable process. And we believe that everybody that qualified for secondary should be fully screened for consideration for an interview and that we should not fill all of our interview spots until every one of those candidates has been considered for an interview. So what I'm telling you is that I promise you that even if you're somebody that cannot take the MCAT until the end of September, um, that once you submit that secondary application back to us. So if you think of the end of September, that um, right now the way it's set, um, that score will come back about a month later. And so that's the end of October. If our deadline is November 1, we might give you some more time to finish that secondary application. But we even at that time, we are going to wait till those applications come back and are submitted and um, have gone through our screening process before we fill all of those interview dates in the spring. We will not fill all of our interview dates until everybody's been considered that received and submitted a secondary application by our deadline. So uh, I just, that's a big concern that's happening right now and I, or being expressed right now, and I want to just assure you of that. Right now, our deadlines remain the same, um, except for I just said that that's one piece. And it is possible that for people that are having to test or that were receiving scores from uh, quite late uh, in the end of October, that for those specific candidates, we might push our secondary dates and we will be in touch with those candidates specifically. Um, Another scenario might be in the, I mentioned previously that if for whatever, you know, if it's possible, if, if the WMC decides to add an October date, uh, in that case, those candidates that we know are, we're waiting for our, uh, MCAT scores from those test dates, again, for those specific candidates, we will consider delaying the secondary deadline a bit. But otherwise, our, our deadlines will remain the same. And I have a slide with our timeline um, near the end as well. So our interview cycle. Um, so we have decided that we are going to conduct an all virtual interview season this se season. There's a lot of reasons for it. Um, there, uh, it, it. This decision is informed by many different factors, including the possibility that COVID isn't going to be oh, is it going to be gone this fall. What we don't want to happen is there to be a disruption in the middle of our interview cycle, such that. We start interviewing some candidates in person and then something happens and we have to switch to then virtual interviews. We would rather have consistency, again, for fairness and equity, uh, that we conduct the, the same sort of process. And so given the uncertainties, uh, we are going to go ahead and conduct an all virtual cycle. Now, I'll tell you, we're not alone in this. There are, in fact, I am on several um, uh, committees nationally and, and regionally, and there are a lot of medical schools that are already calling a virtual interview cycle as well. So I think you're going to see many medical schools doing this. I think that um, this is really, we wanted to be thoughtful of your safety, of your health, of your well-being. We know that this is a stressful time, and so we wanted to be thoughtful about that. It's also budget-friendly. A lot of applicants could be really con uh, experiencing um, some uh, tough financial situations right now because of COVID and having a virtual interview cycle means you don't have to worry about traveling to Spokane to interview and paying for hotels and, and uh, all those kinds of things. Um, but you are still going to be able to interact with our students and with our faculty. And my team has done just an amazing job with some events we've already had to put on virtually. And so I have no doubt we will still be able to make those connections with you and tell you about our program and connect you with our students on that virtual interview day. Um, the other thing uh, or the other kind of reasons that have informed this decision is if you have not heard, um, there were recommendations that came out last week that um, was a coalition of a variety of organizations that have made the strong recommendation to residency programs. So in this, at the same time that we're interviewing for medical school, residency interviews are going on. 
and that residency programs also conduct a virtual interview process this fall. So our rising fourth year students, so that's our inaugural class is about to hit fourth year in, in a couple of weeks, uh, they will hit into a process where they will very likely be interviewing for residency virtually as well. Um, so, so the, anyway, that's just to give you some, some ideas as to why we've made that decision. In terms of how we conduct those interviews, we are trying to shorten the interview day so that it's not so, um, so much time spent on Zoom on an interview day. And we're exploring a couple of modalities. We use the MMI process and my team is uh, working very hard to be prepared for a virtual MMI, but I'm also exploring some other tools instead of the MMI that is still a multi-sampling approach, which is what the MMI modality is. And um, so as soon as I make those decisions and can confirm those, you know, our website will be updated with that and uh, along with resources and so on to prepare for that. So some more updates to come on this, but for sure we will be conducting a virtual interview process. So these are some questions that came in uh, related to COVID specifically. And I just, I pulled out most of these. Um, so one question was, what changes will be made to how applicants' clinical experiences are reviewed due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Can planned experiences be noted on the application? And what can applicants be doing to strengthen this portion of their application while not being in clinics or volunteering? So, Again, this is where this is one of the reasons why we included that secondary question so that you can tell us how things you, you might have your plans might have been disrupted in terms of clinical volunteering or other volunteering or experiences. Uh, I certainly would hope that you weren't waiting until the spring semester to do any of your volunteering. Hopefully you've been longitudinally involved uh, in your communities and in your work and, and so on. Um, but if you did have some disruptions, be sure to let us know that. In the MCAS application, um, I believe starting the cycle actually, um, you're gonna have, and this is new, the cycle where you will report out your hours completed in an activity, and then uh, it, and then they'll separate out if you have planned hours. Uh, because often what happened in years past is that applicants would lump those together. It was really hard for us to discern how much had actually been done versus planned. So I think there's gonna, those are going to be separated out in MCAS. And you all, if you've already started completing the application, will know better than me because I don't see it. I just know what happens on the MCAS side. Um, and then, you know, there are a lot of different ways to still volunteer. We're hearing of all sorts of ways to be involved, even with social distancing. Uh, so, so, you know, be sure to, to seek out those opportunities. Um, know that we have no expectations in terms of we don't have a minimum number of hours that you have to complete in healthcare. Uh, we don't have minimums like that. So we, we just want you to be thoughtful um, in engaging in, in those ways. And certainly, you know, we want you to be careful and, and, and safe and thoughtful for your health as well. So just think of different ways you can evolve, but hopefully you have developed a record up to this point to be able to share if you're applying the cycle. With the format, MCAT format changing, how will scores be looked at from test takers who took the new format versus the old format? So I think by this question, the, it, it, so the format isn't changing, the time is changing. The, the MCAT is being reduced uh, it, to, I think it's five and a half hours. The big difference is that the MCAT is removing some of the field testing um, questions that were part of the, the longer MCATs, and uh, I think some of the breaks have been reduced. The format isn't changing. The content to that is actually tested to, to produce your score is not changing. Um, I am on committees where we have, are involved with uh, the, M, uh, the MCAT team at M, uh, WMC, so I hear directly from them how this is changing. It will not change how we view the MCAT. The MCAT score is gonna be still as reliable and valid as uh, the test when it was over seven hours. So, so nothing will change in, in regards to that as, in terms of how we view it. So to recap, and before I go to Natalie, for any questions uh, related to COVID, and then I can address a few more questions. Prereqs, we're gonna accept pass-fail uh, for our prereqs. MCAT, we will accept uh, as old as 2016, which is a year older than we normally accept, but we will still require the MCAT for the, the secondary. Uh, however, as I mentioned, we will 
uh, not fill all of our interview spots until everybody that's received a secondary and submitted it uh, can be considered. So even those test takers that don't have or have an exam scheduled at the end of September. We have added a new secondary question to allow you to tell us how your life may, has been disrupted due to COVID. We are, post, are, are delaying the start of our interview cycle by a month to mid-September, and uh, we are going to conduct a virtual interview uh, process this year. I think if I could just final words of encouragement is I know that this is a stressful time. I continue to reach out uh, to my team if you have questions. Uh, please understand that we, um, on you know, we we empathize. We're all in a sim, you know similar situations of having to adapt. I think medical schools across the country are being thoughtful and sensitive to the situation that you're in and trying to adapt with you. Um, I, you know, I know that applying to medical school can be stressful, but I will tell you myself and my colleagues who I'm on a lot of national committees. So I work with a lot of admissions deans across the country, and everybody is thoughtful and uh, cares to support you in this process. So be sure to reach out. Um, you know, our medical school is unique in a lot of ways, and I truly hope that many of you are listening and thinking this is a school I could definitely see myself at. Uh, we, and we hope that you apply and, and uh, wish you lots of luck. Don't hesitate to reach out to my team if you have questions. And thank you for joining us.